Good afternoon and welcome to Edgewater Health Mind, Body, and Spirit Wellness Program. I am Latanya Woodson, the Director of Community Health Education right here at Edgewater Health. And I am so excited about today's discussion. So stop what you're doing, get you a pen and notepad, because today's discussion is about eat to live. Are you feeding or fueling? We're going to dive right into today's discussion, but before we do, I have a question to ask you. When we eat, should we be more concerned with fueling our body with the nutrients it needs rather than eating until we get full? And you may say, that's a no-brainer question. Of course we should. But think about it. Do we really take the time to be mindful about everything that's going into our bodies, what we eat, and the impact that it has and it will have as we age? as we go through our journey in life. And this is what this program is about. Mind, body, and spirit. Taking all of that into consideration. Our featured speaker this afternoon will answer that question and so much more because he is none other than Dr. Angie Kubi. Who doesn't know Dr. Angie Kubi? Everybody knows Dr. Angie Kubi. But for those who do not know Dr. Angie Kubi, Allow me a moment to introduce him. <clears throat> Dr. Andrew Kuby received his undergraduate degree in biological sciences at Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan. He graduated from Howard University Medical School in 1980 and completed his internship in internal medicine and pediatrics at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, as well as his family medicine residency at Indiana University Medical Center in Indianapolis. He is board certified in family and integrative medicine and has practiced integrative medicine for more than 25 years. In 1997, Dr. Njokubi founded the Wellness Shop and served as the medical director of the Family Medicine and Wellness Center located in Maryville, Indiana. He is a clinical assistant professor of family medicine at the University of Illinois and Indiana University Medical School. Aside from all of his many achievements, he is a passionate educator on self-healing methods. Dr. Andrew Kuby's mission and goal for his patients is to be healed as naturally as possible. Won't you please help me welcome to the podium, Dr. Andrew Kuby. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, again, my goal today is to answer some of the questions you have about food as medicine. And with that, I'll give you some background in uh, using medicine as food. Yeah. Using medicine as food, I mean using food as medicine instead of medicine as food. Uh, so, the most important thing to be aware of is that your food has everything you need to heal you and your body is ready to allow itself to be healed, but you have to feed it the correct nutrients. So some of the stuff we're going to talk about today are some of the things that people are considering and they don't know what it is. For example, when you tell somebody what is carb, what is protein, what is fat, what are the good facts, and so on and so forth. So we're going to delve into those, and we're going to talk about, you know, feeding versus fueling. Some of the food that we eat actually are for energy. Some to build, some to help your body function better, or allow the cells to communicate better. And we're going to talk about the three basic foods. 
You, you can hear me? Broadcast. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. So we're going to you this this one. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Now that's better. Okay. So we're going to talk about protein, fats, carbohydrates. What are carbohydrates? What do they do for you? And how do they help you? At the end, I want to empower you with the Mediterranean diet which research has shown for all kinds of diseases is excellent. In fact, in the past I have worked uh, with uh, a program called the Red Wine Diet. I bet you all want to know about that. <laughs> I, I call it the Jesus Christ Diet because he turned water into wine. <laughs> so, but if you are alcoholic, you are not part of the program. <laughs> so, the father of uh, medicine, like I was saying, said, let your food be your medicine, and let your medicine be your food. In truth, a lot of medicine derived from uh, uh, plants and animals. And you can use food to actually heal yourself. When somebody is very sick, when they come to me, one of the things I ask them, if I took you like you are and dropped you in the jungle, what would you eat? If you ever eat like that, you probably will heal yourself because you won't find some of the foods that are causing problems for you. So the idea of whole food is that it's going to be free from additives. So it's going to be free from preservative and artificial substances. It's going to be rich in nutrients. Nutrients are some of those things we go to the health food to buy because they are helping our body heal and they benefit you in many, many ways. But they're already in the food that you eat. You just have to eat them whole without, you know, uh, doing a whole lot of uh, processing. And some of the ways we process food is cook them. You need to cook some food, but not all the time. You need some fresh food, canning, freezing, preserving, flavoring, adding additives so that they can last a long time. And there are many other things we do to food. We call them food, but they are really not food like you would find, like I said, in the jungle if you were thrown in there. So, the whole food that you eat is actually feeding you when you feed, you are eating food to create well-being, growth, and healing your body. Giving your body what it needs to heal itself. And the human body will take care of itself if you give it a chance. Sometimes, not feeding the body is how to heal it. Allowing yourself to be hungry a little bit. In fact, as soon as you feel like you are full, it's better to be hungry than to be full of junk food. Always remember that. So it's better for you to fast. And fasting is a way of healing. The Hippocrates that the father of medicine used fasting to heal. I myself encourage fasting. I do it five days a week. I don't eat up until one to two in the afternoon and dinner at five to seven and I'm not eating anything after that. You find that you lose weight, you have more energy, your body gets a chance to rebuild itself. You have a chance to wake up some of your stem cells. A lot of diseases that you have, you can reverse them just doing intermittent fasting. But guess what? You don't have to do it all week, just do it for five days. And on the weekend, party down. <laughs> <laughs> so we said something about whole food and fuel. You can actually use, you know, whole food to heal yourself, I mean to fuel yourself. So one of the medications we use for fueling is carbohydrates. Let me get that to that. It's carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, I am. Okay. So carbohydrates really is the main source of your energy, where you turn sugar into energy. So, if you use carbohydrate, it gets into your cell, turns into energy that you use to move. Whatever you don't use, guess what? Gets stored. 
And when it gets stored, it's stored as glycogen in your muscle or your liver. It, you know, then eventually it stores in your different parts of your body as fat. Those are the things you do not want. But also, when you eat a lot of protein, you can turn it into sugar, but it takes a lot of work. The same thing with fat, you can use fat for energy. As a matter of fact, when you use fat for energy, it's really clean, clean energy. Clean in the sense that, you know, if you have dementia, you can use fat to actually reverse some of the disease processes. Research that was done right before the COVID, they took about 10 people who had dementia and uh, some have Alzheimer's and they put them on very low carbohydrate diet with all their nutrients like vitamin D and so on and so forth. After a few weeks, nine of them got better. Seven got better enough to go back to doing what they did. That, they included some professors and some professionals. Just cutting out starch and using more uh, protein and fat. So you can use this for energy, but that's not you know, the main source of energy that we all use regularly. The one that we all tend to want to use tend to be carbohydrate because it tastes good. As a matter of fact, Carbohydrate can be working like antidepressant because your body will take sugar and turn it into serotonin. You know, your brain will make serotonin out of it, which is antidepressant. So it kind of lifts your mood. But we're going to talk about that because it has its downside too. The downside is where you get caught. So, carbohydrates. So the three basic groups here, we talked about carbohydrate, protein. These are your meat, some of your legume. The protein has built in blood called amino acids, very powerful chemicals that we use to build all kinds of stuff, from uh, muscle to all kinds of different tissues in the body. Like we said, the fat is where you store energy for future use, but also you use it to protect your body like if you are too skinny, your body won't be able to absorb shock if you fell and hit different parts of your body. So, what do you use protein for? Proteins, you know, you use it for making enzymes. Without enzymes, you are not able to break down your food that you need to rebuild your body fast. You are not able to repair your muscles. You are not able to uh, support your, your, your muscles or grow your muscles, you're not able to move, and you use protein right, for transport. Some of the medications we take, we need albumin, which has you know, protein parts of it, to carry the medication in and out in different places. You need it for, you know, like during the COVID, if you're not able to make amino, I mean, uh, anti -glo I mean, I mean uh, antibodies, which are some of parts of which are protein, you are not going to be able to survive. So it's part of your defense against viruses, cancer, and all of that. So you need protein. And as you get older, your need for protein increases. So if you notice, people who, as they get older, they start to shrink, and fat will be replacing the muscle. You have what we call sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is where your muscle gets smaller. So you need a little bit more protein than when you were uh, younger. So, protein is also needed for cells to communicate between each other. And you use it to regulate you know, different functions in the body. You use it for muscle contraction and moving. Because when you don't have a good muscle, like we said, you are not able to move. As you get older, like we said, if your muscles get too small, the chances of falling and hurting yourself increases. So you definitely need to be able to uh, have enough muscle strength to do the things you need to do. If you don't have it, the chances are you could fall and break your hip. And when you break your hip, the chances of dying increase to about 25%. A few days, you know, if you don't get taken care of in a few days. <clears throat> so, how about fat? We said that there are different kinds of fat, there's saturated fat, 
there is unsaturated fat, the unsaturated fat divided into two, polyunsaturated and monounsaturated. And these are very important. The fat that you see like margarine, those are trans fat. Um, some of them you don't want near you. In fact, if you took trans fat and leave it on the table, nothing will eat it. It was there. Even flies won't come close because flies like organic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, saturated fat, you see it some in dairy. Not all saturated fats are bad. Like in coconut, we use coconut oil for different kinds of things. People who have dementia, I actually have them take two tablespoonfuls of coconut oil at least daily and reduce their or remove carbohydrates in their diet. You see them change, improve. Just fat and all kinds of other things. And, and you know, some of the uh, saturated fat in um, uh, coconut is actually antibiotic and protective against different things. So it's not all bad. Butter is not bad for you if it's well made because the butter comes with stuff to help digest it and it tastes good as long as you don't overdo uh, it. Okay, so plant oil, palm oil is excellent. It has a lot of lycopene, it has a lot of nutrients that help fight a lot of diseases. So not all saturated fats are bad. The one from animals you need to be very, very careful with. So the monounsaturated fats are actually excellent for a lot of things like olive oil, avocado, nuts and seeds oil, even white tea oil is uh, very good for you. And then the polyunsaturated fat uh, that you find in fish, fish oil, help with uh, reversing a lot of inflammation from arthritis to mood disorders of people who are depressed and people who have schizophrenia. Uh, you know, fish oil tend to help because it helps the cells communicate in the brain so they do much better. People with arthritis, you know, tend to appreciate that very much. Trans fat is really um, something that is made in the lab when uh, one of the wars they were not able to get enough. Uh, they, I think there was a plague, a lot of the animals were dying and the French government told the scientists to come up with a plan to get butter on the table. So the people who made butter said, heck no, uh, you know, you can't make butter. They say, well, I mean, you can't make trans fat, so they were arguing, they say, well, make sure that if you make it, it doesn't look like butter. So it was clear. Then they began to put some coloring in it to make it yellow. And so you get the margarine that we have. The story is longer than that, but that's the long and short of it. But once they made it, even doctors began to say it's good for you. But we found that it creates inflammation and it's not healthy at all. So you are encouraged not to use it. Maybe, you know, use it to clean your floor, make it shine. <laughs> <laughs> now, carbohydrate, what are carbohydrates? My patients always ask me that. Carbohydrate is really uh, a way that your body, you know, uh, stores starch, I mean, stores sugar. There are different kinds of, you know, there are mono, disaccharide, and then polysaccharide. So we're going to talk about those. But you know, starch is uh, carbohydrate is uh, you know a source of energy. You see it in uh, you know as grains, fruits, vegetables, and you see it in dairy products. Some people tell me, oh, I drink low-fat uh, skim milk, right? That's sugar. That's milk sugar. If you drink that, your body converts it to fat anyway. But if you drink the whole milk, you get the saturated fat, which slows down the rate at which your body absorbs the sugar because the rate of absorption of sugar creates a problem of its own to cause spikes that has other things that we're going to talk about. Because you know, a lot of mood issues, emotional issues relate to sugar. And we're going to talk about that. I was telling some people that the same place in your brain where crack cocaine hits to make you feel good is where Pepsi, Coke, 
sugar and caffeine. That's the same place it hits. If you drink it long enough, the day you don't drink, you're going to get headaches, you're going to have withdrawal symptoms, you're going to be antsy, you're not going to be a good neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> so, carbohydrate, the one that really, you know, we are breaking things down is the glucose fructose, that's what your cell is using for energy. For example, if you get the table sugar, it's glucose with fructose. And you get the milk sugar, it's glucose and galactose. And you get the uh, maltose, in, in you get in glucose and glucose. So the, these things break down into, uh, you know, into the uh, the active portion of the um, the active molecule that your body uses to uh, create energy. But I can assure you, and I've been asking to see if somebody found or has a so, uh, answer to this question. You cannot find sugar easy to reach. If you want honey, you're going to have to deal with the bees. If the bees don't get you, the bears will get you. <laughs> and if you want sugar cane, you have to break down the cane sugar and squeeze it and get it. If you want uh, 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 corn syrup, it's a lot of work. You need science. If you got milk, uh, uh, sugar from um, uh, rice, it's a lot of work. So God hid sugar. And we figured out a way to get it so we can kill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, polyunsaturated uh, poly complex carbohydrates. So, what happens is that sugar is strung together either in two or several. When it's several, that's where you want it because it is all, it's very difficult to break down. And when it breaks down, it's usually hidden in fiber. The fiber slows down the rate at which it gets into your body. And the fiber, amazingly, also helps all kinds of things because it becomes food for bacteria. The bacteria that will eat it will break down and help your gut heal itself. Not only does it help your gut heal itself, it also helps you produce chemicals that even help your brain. There are bacteria that create happiness there are bacteria that will tell your brain to tell you not to eat, that will work like uh, the same kind of system that you see, like, you know, Zempic and all of that. There's some bacteria that will work like that. Some bacteria that will help your gut move better. Some bacteria that will signal to your body to cleanse itself. So, just eating the right kind of carbohydrates, you are seeding your body to heal itself in all kinds of ways. And one of those is this uh, uh, complex carbohydrate like your whole wheat, oat dry, barley, and all of those, those are complex carbohydrates. Uh, potato. Now, one thing you're going to know about carbohydrates, there's something called glycemic index. Glycemic index is the rate at which your body, uh, the food is broken down and the sugar jumps into your blood to uh, cause all kinds of uh, good things and bad things. The rate at which it goes in has been calculated. Uh, for example, glucose is a hundred, right? Um, let's say blood IPs may be 35. Uh, avocado is 15. So the lower the number, the greater the chances that your, your sugar won't be spiking. Not only will it won't spike, you probably have a lot of good nutrients that are attached to it. So. What happens when you eat carbohydrate, especially when it's refined? Like ice cream has a lot of refined stuff in it, like with the sugar in it. Uh, when you drink uh, uh, pap, the sugar, the fructose, what happens? So what happens is that your body will see the sugar and produce insulin. The insulin that it produces we are not designed. Nature did not design us to have this much sugar available to us. So your body will produce insulin to help bring the sugar down. About 50% to 75% of the people, the sugar will drop. When the sugar drops, it creates an emergency inside your body. That emergency actually tells your body that something's wrong. We need to do something quick. So as the sugar drops below, you, your body has to produce adrenaline.
that will then stimulate your liver to produce sugar to keep you from crashing. Because if your sugar goes too low, you can actually have a seizure. You can pass out, you can foam in the mouth. We do use this kind of uh, insulin therapy for cancer treatment where we give you insulin and then your sugar drops, we watch it, but it's a controlled event. But that's not what's happening here. You eat it and your body will react. And when it reacts, you feel really good initially, you enjoy it, and then about two hours later you start feeling tired. Then you feel sleepy. Then you want to sleep. Then you sleep. After you sleep, you wake up and you are pissed, angry, and people get on your nerves. <laughs> and then if you want to relieve that feeling, you gotta do it again. Amazingly, if you take raw sugar and add caffeine to it, let's say your insulin goes up this way and your sugar goes down this way. Once you add caffeine to it, it'll go up and drop very quickly. So it creates a vicious cycle. And so people who drink Pepsi, they have to keep going. Because if you stop, you crash. If you crash, you are pissed. You are pissed, you are a bad neighbor. <laughs> so it's very important to not allow yourself to get that irritable from the food you eat. Can you imagine kids in classroom? eating donuts yeah. and uh, chocolate for breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that's what the sugar spike does. Because it makes you eat it over and over, you gain weight, you gain weight, you have insulin uh, resistance. After some time, your body can't deal with uh, the sugar anymore. It becomes difficult for your body to uh, allow sugar to enter the cell to form energy, so your brain is always telling you you are hungry, but you're really not needing any food. It's just because your, the food you ate is not getting into your cells, because the insulin, which is the key your body uses to open the door for the food to get in, is no longer getting in. So you need to have the sugar come into your system very slowly. So when you have insulin resistance, believe me, that is the beginning of the end for most of us human beings. Because then your, your cells will begin to get gooey. Your brain get gooey, dementia. Your eye get gooey, then you get cataract. Your heart get gooey, blood vessel, heart attack, kidney, all of that. And then your skin, you get wrinkly. It's called glycation. It happens to all parts of your body just from eating sugar. Your teeth, the bacteria is like you, want to eat some sweet, so it wait for you to eat it. <laughs> and then it will grow and destroy your teeth. The, uh, like we said, you never get enough food. To make matters worse, when you eat refined sugar, your body will lose nutrients that you already have in order to metabolize the sugar. Very significant, because the, the same thing that happened to alcoholics, when somebody is always drinking and not eating balanced meals, the day they don't eat, they start going into withdrawal. That's because you have a, a deficiency of uh, nutrients. So it starts to give you magnesium, thiamine, and all of that to help you recover. The same thing like people who use a lot of corn syrup, right? Your body need, begin to lack vitamin B3. You go out in the sun and your neck will be red, right? And the people like that get diarrhea, they get rashes, they get uh, uh, dementia, and they get rage, you know? All of them related to eating refined carbohydrate and not balanced food. And then if you eat a lot of uh, carbohydrates that are refined, there's no fiber, then you get constipated. So we can officially diagnose it as being full of it. <laughs> How about saturated fat? So saturated fat is where the fat is not as, uh, 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 doesn't break down into very useful uh, components that could not, uh, that would lead to inflammation. So the, when it's not saturated, it's more likely to turn into 
some types of uh, 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 neurotransmitter or even nutrient that will communicate with your tissues so that they are more fluid. But when you don't have that, when you have enough of the bad cholesterol from, remember now, I, I forgot to tell you that your body uses your sugar to make cholesterol. And that cholesterol is what causes some of the inflammation. But we also need the cholesterol to do a lot of good things. Being a woman or man come from having the, the you know, cholesterol to make our hormones. To, for stress, you need you know, to make cholesterol for, uh, for, for, to support you for stress. But you don't need as much as we are eating. The same thing goes for some of the uh, uh, you know, saturated fat. It encourages the production of bad cholesterol that will cause inflammation of your blood vessel can lead to what we call vascular dementia. Okay? And it could cause damage to your brain and then it could lead to fatty liver. With fatty liver, you begin to gain weight in the middle. Not only do you gain weight in the middle, you begin to have all kinds of inflammation in your joints, arthritis, uh, because some of those bad uh, chemicals will allow leptin to grow, uh, to increase. When the leptin increases, it, it will have inflammation in your joints. Type 2 diabetes is very common when you eat a lot of saturated fat, especially saturated fat hydrogenated trans fat mixed with starch, like uh, uh, you know you have in french fries. Oh, it looks like people like french fries. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can have french fries when you air fry it with olive oil, right? Right? And then air fry it, you can use, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of even coconut oil it will, may not be too bad. So it's when you do trans fat plus that that you run into trouble. So it has been found that people who eat a lot of saturated fat tend to have problems with dementia. And they, you know, they lose their mind sooner than uh, later. So it's very important to uh, be mindful. And Sorry about that. Okay, so, so uh, it's very important to be mindful of the, um, excuse me here. It's very important to be mindful of your brain because of saturated fat, because it can lead to early dementia. And the treatment is using good fat and fasting. When you fast, your body begins to break down fat. The ketones, the breakdown product of fasting and using fat, actually helps your brain to wake up. You are, you know, that's why when people fast, their mind is more open and they are thinking clearer and so on and so forth. So it's very important to, to remember that. And you also need good hormones. Your good hormones, saturated fat will mess some of that up and cause you to have problems leading to reproductive health issues. People, some people with PCOS, eating starch and saturated fat only make their situation worse. So, what is the solution to all of this? So, I uh, summarize what we are talking about, what to do, now that I've scared the living daylight out of you guys. <laughs> so, life is meant for living, right? If you look at Americans in the 60s and before 1977, most people are skinny. The way you do is just look and you find that people going for demonstration, Martin Luther King, most people are, you don't see people who are heavy. It started after we told people that they should do low fat diet. And guess what people replaced it with? High sugar diet. We didn't win for doing that. Because our ancestors ate balanced whole foods, at that point in time, we began to process food more and more, and the more we process food, the more we eat the foods that are not natural to human beings, and we are paying the price for it. So research showed that people who uh, live in the Mediterranean area, they live longer, they uh, tend to be healthier, 
And when they studied them, they found that the way they are eating is different from the way we are eating. And it's, a, it's contained in this. And this, this here is the pyramid, food pyramid for the Mediterranean diet. And if you look, the bottom half is party time. <laughs> Do you see that? That issue, connection to other human beings is so important. But I'm going to come back to that, but I want to point your uh, attention to that, that human connection is really the basis of their, their program. And I'll tell you a story about a guy who was supposed to die and live many years later. So, the diet is mostly, uh, con you know, it's abundant in fruits and vegetables, legumes, nuts and seeds, whole grains, and this is where you get a lot of your nutrient, fiber, and antioxidants. So those are some of the ways they are able to improve their, the quality of their life. And they do have fat. There's a program called Fasting Mimicking Diet. This is a program promoted and researched by Dr. Malta Longo. I think he's in the University of Southern California. He, I, I've tried it on myself. So, the idea is to eat, but your body thinks you are fasting. And in the process of doing that, it kind of reverses your uh, body where you destroy some of your proteins, including some of your white blood cells, and then when you start eating, it improves it. This is how it goes. For two days, you eat 60% good fat. That's olive oil, you know, saturated, uh, monounsaturated fat for two days, 1,100 calories. For three days, the same thing, but 800 calories. The third day is the hardest. When I was doing it, I asked myself, do you really mean to do this? <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this? But by the end of the evening, I was high for no good reason, and I didn't smoke nothing. <laughs> Just like, by the fourth day, I said, I can do this. By the fifth day, you feel better. By the sixth day, you start refeeding. What it does is that it is 20% starch, complex starch, carbohydrate, 20% protein, 60% good fat. So what happens is that in five days, your body won't have enough protein to make white blood cells and make a lot of the enzyme, most of which are aged and tired anyway. So they all die off. Then your stem cell will wake up and say, oh, we need to rebuild this person, it's falling apart. Then you feed it protein and complex carb, and your body will rebuild, make new red blood cells, new protein for your joints, your liver, and all of that. What does that do? If you have lupus, if you have cancer, if you have diabetes, if you are overweight, your body reprograms and you lose weight, you have more energy, your brain is clearer, cholesterol drops, and so on and so forth. It's called Fasting Mimicking Diet, and the guy uh, has a non-profit organization called Prolong, where you can go to your doctor or go directly to them online and sign up and do this program once or three times a year, and you use it to reboot your body. So, that's, uh, and it's really Mediterranean diet. That's ketogenic Mediterranean diet. And remember, I said something about red wine? Dr. Walter Longo's program with a little red wine is my red wine diet, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, they use dairy, a little cheese, a little yogurt. And if you guys are nice to me today, I'll show you how to make your own yogurt that grows your nail, grows your hair, gives you, help you with gas, slow down aging, make you love your uh, spouse more. <laughs> no, 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 actually, it, it, it makes you make more oxytocin, the love hormone, just eating yogurt. So I'll share that with you guys today. I, I call it the youth yogurt. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so it also contains lean protein from poultry, egg, and all of that, red meat, 
So very little red meat, but the rest of it, you know, you can use. <clears throat> they use herbs and spices that they, instead of uh, too much salt, and some of the eggs and spices are very good and they are medicinal. Like we said, you can have red wine in moderation. But the best part of this program is socialization. The people you eat with, the people you have fun with, and the process of eating good food. They found that that made a whole lot of difference. If you look here, the, the, more, the, the lower part of the pyramid you should do more of, and the top part you do less of. If you look, socialization is the largest, followed by fruits and vegetable, fish, a little more fish than poultry, and very little red wine, and rarely any meat, and occasionally red wine. Now, having said that, the part of socialization, there was a man who was 77 years old from the island of Gikaria, true story that I learned from PBS. So he had metastatic cancer, University of Chicago. So they told him to go home and die. And he said, really? I said, okay, so he went. Instead of going home to the house in, in, in the US, he moved back to the island of Ikaria. And then there, every morning, you go do your farming, do whatever you do. In the evening, you eat good food, dance until 10 o'clock and have fun with people and go to sleep. So when they went to visit the island, the man was 103 years old. And uh, when they interviewed him and said, what happened to you? Your, he said, well, the doctor that told me to go die, died before me. <laughs> and they said, what happened to you? He said, I forgot to die. I was having too much fun. <laughs> So please eat right and please forget to die when you die. <laughs> 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 Let's give another hand to Dr. Angie Cooley. Wow. So I want you all to get your answers or your questions together to ask Dr. Angie Cooley, but I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, would you be able to tell me some information pertaining to detoxing the body, you know, to get rid of the food that we, you know, we eat a lot of good, or mm -hmm. if we went on vacation, or we probably ate something, you know, that didn't agree with us, how can we detox the body to prepare for weight loss or just getting rid of bad food? You like, it looked like you just came back from vacation. I did. <laughs> 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 well, uh, actually, one of the ways to do that is water, lemon, and olive oil. Water, lemon, and olive oil. Now, water and lemon by itself will do it. One lemon, cut it into four, put it in and squeeze. Make sure the oil in the skin gets in the water. And then drink uh, one lemon to one liter of oil. Drink two of those every day. If you want to cleanse your liver, then do the same thing. Drink one tablespoonful of extra virgin, really good extra virgin olive oil. That will stimulate your gallbladder and your liver to dump toxic stuff into your colon. And when you do that, your body builds all kinds of stuff to repair itself. And then they, 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 what, what happens is that your body pushes bile into your colon and you do even physical bowel movement kind of cleanse in addition to the, you know, the, the worm going through your blood. So that's one. Then cut out all grains. Yeah? Grains? Cut out or just do vegetable seeds, nuts, you know, um, monk, monk beans for about two days to seven days to 14 days, and on no dairy, that allows your body to rest and cleanse. About 60% of those try to make it raw, and that you know goes back to, if I threw you in the jungle, what would you eat, kind of stuff. And stay away from refined sugar as much as possible, for that two weeks. And if you want to get really fancy, and you want to lose weight, then after that, cut out carbs and do fish, turkey, chicken, vegetable, and stay away from uh, uh, starch. 
for two weeks. Then you start burning fat and dump a lot more toxin from your fat cells. But then you need to uh, take some nutrients that allow you to um, convert toxic stuff from your cells into stuff that your body can uh, um, process and you can pee it out. It's called phase one and two detox uh, program in your body. So you talked about um, eating to reverse diseases. Right. So when we say we have heart disease in our family or diabetes in our families, it's genetic. Mm -hmm. How true is that versus what we what we eat? Okay. So everybody is born with some genetic issue, but most of it for you to go from being an egg and sperm to become human being and be who you are, nature already prepared your body to survive. But whatever nature gave you in terms of genetic material, how it, you interact with the environment is very critical. The example I gave about genetics is if you're an albino, if you stay indoors, your skin won't burn. But if you go outdoors, you will burn. The reason you're born is not just because you're albino, because you're albino and went out in the sun. The same way, if you carry gene for being diabetic, you want to learn all you need to know what causes diabetes and avoid it, and stay away from it as much as you can, so that you don't turn on the gene. As you get older, some genes get turned off, some genes get turned on, the one that get turned on uh, could be one that relate to cancer and all that, but they don't have to be turned on if you know the things you need to do to protect yourself against it. From meditation, prayer, exercise, water, sunshine, good sleep, 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 sleep. Sleep is good medicine. So that also helps turn off all kinds of genes. Any questions? Yes, let me come to you. Yes. And, and she wants to know about the yogurt as well. Yogurt, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the plaque in your artery is really inflammation. The human body, like I said, is designed to protect itself from all kinds of diseases. So your blood vessel is a, a tube that is lined by very intelligent cells that is constantly communicating with what's going through it. So at the, the mere force of blood going through will do damage to the wall of the blood vessel. And when it does, the body tries to repair it. And in repairing it, you know, the body will take what you call foam cells and try to patch it. And the process, calcium will deposit it with the cholesterol and all of that. If you want to reverse it, you have to go backwards. Number one, one of the things that they have found help is vitamin B3. B like boy, three. Vitamin B like boy, three. Niacin has been found to, to be helpful in reversing it. Reducing the amount of carbohydrates you eat and saturated fat. Uh, doing the uh, fasting mimicking diet has been found to reverse a lot of diseases because it allows you to do some, uh, you know, produce some um, stem cells that are young. But it's not easy to reverse it, but it's, you know, in the past, people have said that if you did chelation therapy, it has shown that it has minimal effect. But the one that I have found most useful is using, uh, you know, stopping the process, number one, and using uh, uh, medication, I mean, uh, niacin at a higher dose, not 50 milligram, like 500 to 2,000 milligram. And you have to be careful because sometimes it makes you nauseous and cause you know, inflammation in the liver and sometimes will increase your chances of becoming insulin resistant. So it has its gives and take, but it has been shown to do some reversal of plaque. B3. B like boy, 3. And okay. by the way, if you do any B vitamin, make sure the other vitamins are in place, like B1, B2, you know, B5, 6, B12, folic acid, because they work in 
tandem, otherwise you would throw your system out of kilter. Okay, okay before you tell us about the yoga, yes, yes. <laughs> is there any other questions? One more question. Uh, I have a question um, yeah. in reference to menopause. Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, as we talk about uh, the benefits of eating healthy, I mean, in eating healthy, is there anything to help with some of the things that are going to go through it? The menopause, the hot flashes, the mood swings, things of that nature. Yes. Food is medicine. And if you ate whole foods, lots of, uh, you know, uh, fresh vegetables, nuts and seeds, seafood, especially cold water, some of those oils will help your body with that. Exercise, meditation, make sure you're doing plenty of water, vitamin D, going out, just going out in the sun, you know, between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m., and the way you know you have enough sunshine is your skin will sting a little bit and you know it's time to get back. The darker your skin is, the longer you can stay, the lighter your skin or redhead, you want to be careful because you can burn a whole lot easier. All of those can be ways to reverse, uh, uh, I mean to help with uh, the hot flashes. Now, if you eat spicy food, sometimes it will trigger it. Yeah, spicy food, fried food, stuff like that would trigger it. So, whole foods, exercise, meditation, make sure you sleep. If all of that fail, then you can use something. <laughs> you, can, you can use hormone replacement therapy that's natural, like, uh, you know, progesterone cream, DHEA, and if that doesn't help, we can go into having the pharmacist and uh, make you buy identical hormone that you can rub as a cream or you can put in as a pellet. All of those are stuff we've done for patients and they feel better. The danger is that sometimes we fix women too much and they turn into cougars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we want to know about this yogurt. yogurt okay. okay. All right. So the yogurt I learned from a doctor who is a cardiologist. And this doctor is, uh, you know, uh, using yogurt, but it's a particular type of bacteria. It's bacteria ruteri, but it's a strain, two strains that are put together. And so you put that strain and feed it in a vein, which you can get online, then half and half milk, and then, I'm going to give you, I think I brought the uh, hand down. I think I, I, I found one in my bag. And then mix them together, put it in half and half, uh, uh, I mean, we have put it in instant pot. Within eight hours, you have a yogurt that's very thick, like ice cream. Now, to make it taste like ice cream and better, I add something called monk fruit powder, which is zero calories zero sugar, but it tastes sweeter than sugar. And if you want it to help your skin and your joint, we add collagen powder to it. And if you want to get fancy with inflammation, then we add something called golden milk. Golden milk is turmeric, ashwagandha, dates, uh, you know, different kinds of nutrients, that, but turmeric is the base. And you mix all of that with it. If you want to make it help you sleep at night, that's a, a, an amino acid called glycine that tastes sweeter than sugar. But when you add it to it, it helps you sleep well, it helps with wrinkles, it helps with all kinds of stuff, the, the, the glycine. That's a whole lecture by itself that I won't mind coming to give you what to do with glycine. And when you add glycine to NAC, it's amazing how it reverses a lot of stuff related to aging while you are sleeping. In fact, I mean, that's amazing. They're still doing that research at Duke and different parts of the uh, world as we speak because they found it very useful. But I'll give you the information about the yogurt and the uh, uh, glycine, monk food powder, and uh, the um, uh, golden milk. Okay, so you gave us a lot of information. Yes, ma'am. So how can they reach you? Okay, interesting. So, in June, right now I'm working for Village Medical. 
which is a, a, a national organization that does did primary care, but now they are very uh, big, and they are turned into um, a multi-specialty. We started our primary care. So I worked for them for two years, but in June, my contract expired, and I decided not to renew it to join Edgewater. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will be in the, uh, uh, the what? Well, come on down. The, 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 the you don't have a lot of patience. Well, come, on, come on down, the prize is right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be at uh, 5495 Broadway. It's my old office that uh, Edgewater uh, in a graciously put together where I'll be working. My goal there is really to do primary care. But in a roundabout way, psychiatry what I call biological psychiatry. I secretly wanted to be a psychiatrist before I, I decided to be a family doctor, yes. When I came to this country in 1972, I had a friend, she was 83 years old, we became a very good friend. So she asked me what I wanted to be, I told her I wanted to be a psychiatrist. Then, <laughs> Then uh, my brother was in med school at uh, Wayne State University, and I was reading her, his books on psychiatry. I was very fascinated. When I got to med school, I realized that I had to write just write prescription, not much. So I said, no, I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to go into uh, family medicine. But even with that, I'm interested in the human mind. I, I like to use nutrients, foods, uh, vitamins, exercise, meditation, hypnosis to help people. The goal is to empower the person to take care of themselves. And if he fails, we can use medicine. But I don't think we can beat God in helping you heal yourself. And all we need to do is learn what God is trying for you to do with your body. And you <laughs> answered my last question, right. so thank you. Let's give Dr. Andy Cooley a huge Thank you so very much. And thank you to everyone that came out into our social media platform for joining today's discussion. Eat to live. Are you feeding or fueling? I want to thank Dr. Andrew Kuby for his informative and powerful, powerful discussion. I know people are going to be reaching out to you. And if you want to know more about Edgewater Health our, and our services, our programs, you can reach out to me, Latanya Woodson, or you can go up, you can email me at lwoodson at edgewaterhealth.org or go to our website at edgewaterhealth.org. Don't forget, every third Thursday at noon, we will continue to present topics that, like Dr. Kubi said, engage, educate, and empower. Engage, educate, and empower. So, we're ending. Don't forget, next month, every third Thursday. And remember, at Edgewater Health, what do we do? We take care of the whole person. Thank you.